I want to thank uh, Pastor Blankenship and his staff for this opportunity. We're going to go into the book of Luke, chapter 11, and verse 1. Luke chapter 11, verse 1 says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. You may be seated. If I was to use a thought today, I would say, what is your hour of prayer? What is your hour of prayer? So we know that prayer is communication with the one true God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And prayer has, uh, since uh, the foundation of the word, prayer has always been free. It's always been wireless. Unlike AT&T and T-Mobile, you have to pay to talk. But when you talk to God, it's free. But the problem is that too many people are not praying to God. Too many people, they come to God to pray when they want something from God. But prayer has to be a lifestyle. The disciples who were with Jesus did not even know how to pray themselves. Otherwise, one of the disciples would not have asked Jesus how to, to pray. And then when he asked Jesus how to pray, it was for all the other disciples. So prayer has to be learned. Prayer is something that must be learned. It has to be developed, saints of God. It has to be a lifestyle. And once you learn how to pray, you got to put it into practice each and every day. Every day, we should be praying each and every day. Don't just come to God when you need something. Yes, he can answer your prayer when you need something, but have a lifestyle a perpetual lifestyle daily with God and pray and seek his face. After you learn how to pray, you got to set a time to pray. Set a time to pray because we live busy lifestyles, very busy lifestyles because before you know it, you go to work in the morning, you come home, you got to take care of the kids, you got to cook dinner, you got to put the kids to bed. When did you pray? When did you pray? You got to set a time to pray. If you don't set a time to pray, the whole day is going to go through and go by, and you didn't even pray to God, our Lord and Savior, who woke you up this morning. Set a time to pray. It could be in the morning. It could be at lunch in the afternoon. But we got to make time to pray. Sometimes you got to give something up to pray. Sleep, food, television. If most of us would, would pray as much as we watch television, we would see a supernatural act of God. Some of us, we spend too much time watching television and not praying and seeking God's face. Acts chapter 3 verse 1 says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. They had a set time to pray. What about you, saints of God? What is your set time to pray? What is your set time to pray? You know, when I lived in Cuba, um, I had to guard the Muslims, and uh, they prayed five times a day. I watched them. Every day, they prayed five times a day. No matter what happened, they would make time for prayer. Five times a day. It would, not, it would never cease. They would pray in the dawn, noon, mid-afternoon, just after sunset, and before retiring to bed. But the only problem with them is that they had a face Mecca. They had a face Mecca, which is um, it's the great mosque of Mecca known as Masjid al-Haran, is considered to be Islam's most sacred mosque, and Muslim anywhere face toward it when they pray. Saints of God, we don't have to face Mecca when we pray. We can pray to the one true God anywhere we are. We just got to come before him and pray and seek his face and call upon his name day and night. The scripture says in Isaiah 45 and 22, God says, look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. So we look unto God. That's who we look unto when we pray and seek his face. Come to the house of God, saints of God. We come to the house of God Sunday and Wednesdays. We come to the house of God, we pray before we have services. Coming to the house of God is something that we should be doing on a regular basis. Coming to prayer is something that we should be doing on a regular basis. It is our reasonable service. God is not going to pat you on the back for coming to the house of God and praying. When the doors are open, come to the house of God and pray. Seek his faith. we got to come together in corporate prayer. Don't make excuses for not coming to the house of God. We don't make excuses when we want God to do something for us. So we, we got to come to the house of God when the door is open. 
And speaking of when the door is open, we're going to be having fasting and prayer on Monday through Wednesday. So when the door is open, saints of God, come to the house of God and pray and seek his face and call upon his name. These are things that we ought to be doing on a regular basis. Pastors should not have to pump you up to come to the house of God to pray. When the doors are open, come to the house of God on your own accord if you are able to and pray and seek God's face. How can you be more effective in prayer? Get a prayer buddy or join a prayer line. I'm part of a prayer line. We start at 5 o'clock in the morning. We pray from all people all over the world. We get together and pray on the phone line. Get a prayer buddy. It has to be done, saints of God. We got to pray. Push. There's an acronym called PUSH. Pray until something happens. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, to pray without ceasing. Don't ever give up on God. Just keep praying until God does something. Keep praying until God does something. He will answer your prayers. He is an on-time God. You got to pray to God and believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Pray, saints of God, and seek his face. There is no substitute for praying. Either pray or suffer from a lack of prayer. What is your hour of prayer? In Daniel chapter 6, God prospered Daniel even when his jealous counterparts wanted him dead. They created an outrageous law to sentence him to death for praying. When the writing was signed, Daniel still prayed three times a day as he did before. So nothing stopped Daniel from praying. No matter who came against him, he still prayed. He still seek God's face. He still called upon his name. So what about you doing your hour of prayer? What's going to stop you from praying? Difficulties? Circumstances? Financial hardship? What's going to stop you, saints of God? You got to keep praying and keep seeking God's face. You have a quote that says, no prayer equal no power. Little prayer equal little power. Much prayer equal much power. I encourage you today, if you don't have an hour of prayer, take the time to figure out what time can you pray? What time can you set aside before God that this is going to be my time? This is going to be the time that I'm going to pray and seek God's face. This is going to be the time that I'm going to call upon his name and pray and magnify his name. Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, and he spoke a parable unto them unto this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen.